dungeon finishing time. All right. All right, that's what you do awfully at none of these again. <laughs> cool. Actually, this one's well, actually... Oh, uh, well. Oh, uh, well. No, uh, yeah. Okay. Oh, fuck. Maybe stand in a point where you can actually yeah, reach... Oh, no, I see what it is. It's not letting oh, me... It's because of the... Yeah. Hang on. Haha. Very good. Very good. Yeah. Oh, you there we go. Hey, that did nothing. Talk to the thing. Oh, it has to go. Bitch has to go the other way. Oh, fuck. But. When they are aligned in their. Yeah, you could just hit the middle. But it says aligned in their true form. What? The path will be revealed. Oh. Go back for a sec. Just see if there's any kind of clues. I guess. Oh, well. Nope. Uh, made water go back down. There's got to be somewhere which gives you a clue on to what the pattern is. Bitch, it's right down here. Probably. Why does the camera go all the way over there to show the water? That's... There it is. So, X, A... Cool. Okay, that's that's easy enough to remember, I think. So, if... Oh, no, in fact, you don't even need to put the water back up. You can just do it now. Okay, so... Well, let's do this, and then... Okay. So, it's these ones... That one. Oh, motherfucker. <laughs> that one and that one. Nice. Easy peasy. That wasn't too hard. Anyway, I did ha I had a yeah. thing I was going to talk about. Um, basically. Oh, yeah, okay, that makes sense. Um, basically, my, my brother's a musician as well. He's not um, at our stage yet. Did you need the water up? Nope. <laughs> Okay, um, like he's currently studying guitar, bass guitar actually, at WAPA, West Australian Academy of Performing Arts. It's the place where Hugh Jackman used to be, um, which means nothing because he's playing bass guitar, not <laughs> acting. But yeah. But still. <laughs> but still, yeah, yeah. Um, but he's like incredibly good at bass guitar, like, and he's recently done actual gigs, like paid gigs. So he's doing all right for himself. Nice. Um, they're not like you can retire easy on these gigs type thing they're as good as a musician can get i guess push the rock um what rock the one oh there i didn't yeah. see that <laughs> that's right good um oh what do you do I have to roll a rock down oh hang on oh no 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 i know i know okay good Oh, yeah, I see. Very clever. Okay, but he's doing music and such. And uh, he's also trying to compose music as well, but he's very partial to metal. Like, mm. I'm... If anyone asks me about like, my favorite music, my usual... Depending on who it is, my usual response is kind of the wanky, oh, I like everything. But my actual uh, true answer is uh, it's, like, soundtrack-based things and heavy metal. Like, the heavier, the better for me. And he's mm. the same, uh, except he's much more parceled metal because, you know, he plays a lot of that sort of thing. Um, but he wants to kind of find something different to write for bass guitar because uh, as in his... Uh, oh, good, you have to do have a key. Yeah. Uh, in his... Nice, but... <laughs> in his words, the uh, bass guitar is always incredibly boring for uh, in any metal music, like... You can tell a lot of the time that the bass guitar is always kind of a mm. an, an extra thing, just because it's there. Um, and he finds it really boring, so he so he'll like look up how to play the bass guitar of a certain really complicated piece. And the person's like, "Okay, here we go," and it's like, "Do do 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 yeah. do." He's like, "God damn it!" Um, so he wants to write kind of like bass guitar music that's different and really complicated so he can actually kind of show off his skills mm. but like but the different part is is uh struggling for him because oh you got the key excellent yeah. we're so close then um i i guess you've got to find a way without having to do the block shit or do you or can you put it on the thing and bounce it i'm off? wondering if you can i'm just trying to offload it properly yeah how do you how do you offload it? That works. Let's do it. 
no is the answer no. to that. Okay, cool. Okay, I guess you got to walk. Um, yeah, the different part is a bit he's struggling with because uh, he's just well, metal kind of metals kind of unless you're really really good at composing, metals kind of kind of sounds it falls under very specific tropes, mm. yeah. which isn't the case for a lot of you know um, music styles. I mean, you can't exactly write country music without the most basic ah uh, it's all right ah uh, ah uh, oh god with uh, with the most basic of ah oh, shit oh fuck hey <laughs> a key <laughs> oh fuck oh nice well <laughs> better kill myself <laughs> oh <laughs> With uh, anyway, with the most basic of chord progressions, you can't do country music with fancy chord progressions. It's no. just not how you do it. Um, uh, yeah, so metal, like metal's the most varied of the more popular musics, but it still falls under certain tropes. Mm. Uh, and he's trying to break that, but he he's not sure how. Uh, and I've been talking to him about it and kind of going through. Um, tonal music that's not typically tonal mm. so i'm talking about like neoclassical stuff um because uh i moved out of my parents house a little while ago and then i had to move back because of money woes mm. uh but when i when i left sorry <laughs> when i left um i took what i could and then just kind of said, yeah, we'll do whatever with the rest of it. Mm. But I accidentally left my uni st books there. Oh, bummer. Yeah. And I think, luckily, my brother decided to save them because he went in and just took whatever was left that he thought would be good. Mm. And I think he saved them, so good on him. Nice. But uh, he was reading through Cosco and Payne, which is a... Um, <sighs> Memories. Yeah, which is a uh, lovely music theory book, which I thought was actually decent, but a lot of people whinged about it on... Uh, Oh, no, the, the books themselves were very good. Like, um, oh. I think a lot of people that we knew, because we used them at uni, mm. I think the complaints probably weren't so much about, or they they might have thought they were about the books, but I think probably the issue was more with the way the books are being used as opposed to yeah. um, the books themselves. But anyway, I'm hijacking Anyway, you story. concentrate on, on this, yeah. uh, and I'll just keep talking, because this looks like a a more difficult fight. What are you doing? Uh, I guess just... Oh, I see. Oh, okay, that's easy enough. You just fucking make bounce your way up and then hit him. Um, what was it? Oh, yeah, yeah. And uh, one of the things it was talking about is melody writing. Oh, well. Yeah. Saying that uh, melodies should follow... They, they, they should be, you know, singable. Uh, they should go not in step but not huge leaps mm. yeah and yeah. we know this like we, i don't need to explain that to you but um like he found it very interesting when we were talking about melody writing because it's one of those ones which uh whenever anyone asks me how do you write a decent melody i'm like i don't fucking know i just uh i just roll with what i do um it's one of the few things in music that i'm more like i'm not sure how to do it type thing um, you're doing right as well. Mm. Try drinking a potion because you are low on. I have the auto potion, so. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, God, they were a long time ago. Um, yeah. So we're talking about that, but then we also start talking about certain existing things that uh, he could use in his new wave. Well, no, new wave metal is a thing. So yeah. the, whatever, whatever you want. New, new call post it. new yeah, wave yeah, metal. Yeah, yeah. This, this, this idea that he has. Um, and we started talking about. Sorry, that was uh, that was weird as. Yeah, that was my text uh, message uh, thing. Um, it's the Donkey Kong all banana thing from oh, Circus yeah. sixty four. So if you heard that, I'm sorry. Um, but anyway, the it was quite interesting because it, one it, it reminded me of how interesting kind of that kind of twentieth century period was. Um, but two, like he was also fascinated by it because he didn't realize half the shit even existed. Mm. Um, because 
Uh, my reasoning was back, everyone who thinks about kind of modern classical 20th century type things thinks of the 12 tone, beyond 12 tone serialism type thing, which is all the crazy music shit, which. Mm. Uh, Hey, okay, so it doesn't work. <laughs> I was freaking out everything. Say, I was like, yeah. shit. <laughs> so was I. I was like, are you going to drink it? Are you going to drink it? Oh, okay. Um, God, you, yeah. Oh, God, that's tough. Um, yeah, hmm. like, the, everyone thinks about the serialist stuff. So they're all like, oh, it's the gross music. And I'm like, ah, oh, actually, there was a lot of really good stuff during the 20th century oh, that yeah. was, in fact, really tonal. Um... And yeah, it's just maybe letting him do an attack first to kind of do. Wait until he does the arrow thing, because that keeps him where he is constantly. Need to get him on the right side. Like there now, go. Go. yeah. But I need to get onto this side. Yeah, no, the back. Yeah, it's got to be oh, the back. Right. Um. Yeah. Anyway, the yeah, we were going through like all the kind of tonal 20th century stuff, and it was quite interesting because. A lot of people I know don't realize it exists. Or a lot of people who ask me about this sort of thing don't realize it exists. Mm. Um, so we went through neoclassicism, we went with we Hindemith and uh, a later com female composer who I can't remember her name, but she was the first person to win the, the big American prize for composition. I can't remember what it was. Uh, I can't remember her name. Wasn't she the one that's done, like, the... Was she Russian one? She did, like, the... That piece for many, many bases? Or am I thinking something I don't else? know. You're probably thinking something else. And I'm thinking of the very first woman to win um, the award that Steve Reich and... Nice. John oh, Adams yeah. practically win every year these days. Um, I was thinking of... No, I was thinking of a different one. I was thinking yeah. of what's her name, Goodbye, Jolina. Yeah. We... <laughs> Him looking around makes it so hard. Um, we actually had to study it for a little while. It was like her first symphony won it. Whatever. Um, we, we basically talked about that, the kind of neoclassicism, neo-romanticism type thing. Mm. Uh, and then we went, uh, and, and this is kind of like the, the climax of the story. We went on about um, Tintin a Bully stuff with oh, yeah. Arthur Parr. Arthur Parr, yeah. Yeah, because uh, we... Um, I can't remember how we got onto it. Well, I think it was just because he was looking like he was looking for tonal things. He didn't want to make any kind of ridiculously atonal drunk, mm. uh, which metal actually works really well with ridiculously atonal drunks. I was about to say, yeah. But um, I was like, okay, try Tintin a bully, uh, and it was interesting because we started talking about wait till just the I don't know he has stopped. Never mind. Um, Hey, now what the fuck do you do? Oh, he's got more buttons on his face. Nice, I guess. No, oh, well. Oh, hang on. Oh, I see. Oh, you've actually got to get Stab on top him. of him. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, but it was interesting because we started talking about doing a metal version of Tintin and Bully. Which, uh, you know, if you understand, like, the existing Tintin and Bully pieces, that sounds really fucking weird. Because mm. um, Tintin and Bully was, like I said, it was other pair. And uh, he, his main well known Tintin and Bully pieces are Feralina and Spiegel and Spiegel. Mm. And both of them are very kind of melancholic super sad sounding pieces like fire leader makes makes me feel really kind of down every time i listen to it and i listen mm. to it a lot because it's it's one of the most complicated pieces yet simple pieces i've ever heard mm. um but i was like so how would that work as a metal piece <laughs> and uh yeah god that's a an interesting thing to think about. Mm. I do it myself just to see what it sounds like. Yeah. Metal uh, Tintin a Bully. That's an interesting one. Damn. Did you guys ever talk about um, like the jazz route with, with that kind of yeah, stuff? Yeah, he's done um, like I will probably push that more because I think jazz and metal, like more jazz influences and metal is the way to go for the future. 
um, none of this. Well, it just stuff. it just leads a lot more to virtuosic bass mm. playing as well. If, um, oh, that like, too. Particularly if you look at like bebop and kind of the yeah. the. Crazy anyway, maybe this one's slightly extended and just go get the crystal thing. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Like uh, I think jazz is the way of the future for metal, mm. but um, we were mainly talking about just classical. Yeah, yeah. Things. No, fair enough. Um, yeah, and it was it reminded me this morning because I was quickly go just going through some kind of music stuff before I came over here, mm. and I was also kind of just browsing Tumblr and Vine and all that, and uh, like I, I had a, a Vine thing open that I. No, no, it was on Tumblr. Tumblr, it was a vine that was on Tumblr because when you leave the tab, it um, the the sound stops. Mm. And then I put Furalina on to kind of just remind myself of something. I can't remember what it was. I think it was for a specific piano thing I was going to talk to him about. Mm. Um, and then I went back onto it and the vine I had on was of a guy on a subway dressed up as a penguin playing drums on the train. <laughs> And it fitted perfectly okay. for some reason. I was just like, wow. <laughs> okay, so that's what it would sound like if Furalina was a metal music. Um, but it made me laugh. That's hilarious. Yeah. Anyway, we're uh, heading back to the ship now. We'll carry on from when we're actually there. 